We really appreciate it. Obviously, appreciate all of you guys being here. Two more best of fives to go. Very exciting week, guys. Honestly, uh, there's so much cool StarCraft coming up. On Sunday, I may be actually helping out Trigger a little bit as he's doing a sub tournament. So we have some fun community StarCraft on Sunday. And on Monday, the WTL continues. WTL code A, no longer open qualifiers. So that's going to be super exciting and awesome. I can't wait for that. And then, of course, we get closer and closer to the Dreamer qualifiers too. But especially WTL next week is incredibly exciting. Can't wait. Woohoo! <laughs> it's going to be great, guys. It's going to be great. It will be Basilisk against the Platinum Heroes in the first round. Yes, I said Monday. Monday it is. And then obviously Monday night we have a weekly. So Monday we have one hell of a StarCraft 2 day. What a time to be alive. All right. I'm going to go ahead and invite these nerds. Uh, both guys, by the way, here guys, Moja and Nemshar have played one time earlier in the Bastardus Big Brain Bouts. They both won. Convincingly too, Moja had a 3-0 victory over Nikorok. And TVTs are not very memorable for me, but the way that he won that final game, I do remember that. There was a no GG ending. That was a... Uh, that was a spicy one. Nemshar played, I think, against Robbie Plata, our American Protoss, and it was either a 3-0 or a 3-1. It's a pretty long time ago. Back then he was in America. At the moment he's in Sweden. It's already 1-0. For France? I mean, that's good, because I actually uh, I predicted friends to win. Wow, Czech Republic is already up 2-0. What the hell? <laughs> For who is this worse, guys? For the Netherlands or France? Netherlands down 1-0 after 4 minutes. How is Poland down 2-0 after 5 minutes of football? That's impressive. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I just want to know how they managed to do that. Impressive. All right, we're in the lobby. They were still videoing. Apparently, they took the veto process very serious, but Moja is ready. Nemshar is ready. 65k for Moja at the moment, 65k for Nemshar. See, you guys are uh, not willing to bet any big channel points yet. They're tough tonight, aren't they, guys? There are no easy channel points tonight. Nemshar still plays? Yes. He's currently in uh, Europe as well. And I was already going to invite Nemshar again, because I already invited him once before. But I have to give a little shout out to the great Yona Sotala. Because I asked Sero, I was like, hey Sero, let me know when you want to play again on Friday night. He's like, alright, we'll do. And then he was in my channel and he said, you should ask Nemshar to play. And I was like, alright. Sero, if you tell me to invite Nemshar, I'll invite Nemshar. And I think we've got a great match here. Let's do it. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. In the top left side of Gresvan, we are looking at the main base of a German Terran. Has a perfect record on the Friday night after one appearance, 3-0. This guy has made some very good progress over the last few months. A solid 6k MMR Terran. This is Moja. Representing K10. Last week, K10 had a great Friday night with Jumi's victory over Lambo. And in the bottom right side, guys, we're looking at the main base of an absolute legend within the European scene. This man has been around for God knows how many years. For a long time, I think a solid top 8 player in Europe. Then he kind of started to shift his focus a little bit in life on studies, moved to Canada for a while. But at the moment, he's back in Europe. I don't know if that's forever or if that's temporary. But I do know he still plays and he still got it. Sidestorm Gaming's in Nemshar. And there is one thing, guys, that I'm going to bring up a couple of times throughout this best of five. And that is the fact that Moja is one of the quote-unquote slower players in the European scene. Like, <laughs> I feel like at this point he's doing this on purpose almost. But this is not an APM spammer, guys. Moja is just chilling. 6k with Terran, 100, 120 APM. He's honestly making Goody proud. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is happening here? 89 average. Do you ever see this at this level? No, you don't. This is a wild build, by the way. Super gritty. CC first into barracks into another CC. Like, well, you're actually playing with one hand. <laughs> and he said, I brought it up the last time when I was casting his TVTs. And he watched the VOD. And he said, wow, Roddy, I can't believe you're bullying me for my low APM. I was like, I'm not bullying you at all, mate. I think it's freaking awesome. 
I think it's freaking awesome that you can be a 6k Terran while not clicking buttons randomly all over the place and you know making it seem that you can only play Starcraft on a high level if you're lightning fast like all these youngsters this build by the way guys okay I want to talk about this I have only ever seen one Terran open up like this where it's CC first into a barracks into another CC into four gas and some of you diehard Starcraft 2 fans may remember me talking about this a couple times ago but this is basically Cure's build of Neo Humanity against Ragnarok at uh, IEM Katowice. And I think it was Pig and Artosis casting that game. And they were losing their shit because they were like, what is this? Like, this is not even a build. What am I looking at? And if you guys wonder how did that game play out? Well, Ragnarok made 10 Zerglings, ran to the other side of the map. And that was it. GG. There was literally no answer for 10 links. This is, this is just so bizarre. It's actually really bizarre. 2-0 for friends already. Oh my god. Netherlands is going to get absolutely blasted tonight, aren't they? <laughs> Alright, so we have another Varex. We did not have the gas in the main yet. But they're still very early. But at least... Okay. It's slightly different than the one that Cure was doing it. Because Cure had the gases, I think, even quicker. But this is still very, very, very early for gas. 3 minutes, 50 seconds, 3 base, 4 gas. APM has been stepped up a little bit. And double eBay up and running. Alright. Yes, the main event will have a Protoss. And that will be Trigger versus uh, Kalazur. It's also a rematch of the Big Brain Bouts. We'll talk more about it later. Now, what I can talk to you guys about stylistically a little bit is that Nemshar has always been a very good Zerg, but he is a very passive Zerg. I remember casting him multiple times in the WCS days from the studio in Burbank back then with Nate, Nate or, uh, In Control, Zombie Grub, Fear Dragon. And there would be a lot of games where Nemshar could be 10, 12 minutes into a ZVT and he would not make it past what I like to call the 50 yard line. If this entire map was a football field, he just wouldn't make it past the 50 yard line. He would just sit there and, and just chill all the way up to Hive, Brute Lords, multiple bases. And maybe that's why Moja is playing so freaking greedy here. Because he feels that he can get away with it since Nemsha doesn't all in anyway. Now, Nemsha is a smart guy. And if he takes a look at the build order that Moja went for, he may switch it up a little bit in game 2 and game 3. Because I don't think we have to let a Terran get away with this. Moja seemed a little bit concerned there about the Overseer. Well, he wants to hide the Overseer, but this Overseer will always see this Orbital. It's a very different start. Even though it's TVZ, just like Cuckoo vs. Nikic was TVZ. I think it is safe to say, guys, that this is very different than what we saw earlier. Like, Nemsha made safety roaches in a game where he absolutely did not need safety roaches. He could have been a 4 base Zerg with 80 plus drones. These roaches had nothing to do. Legitimately nothing. By the way, Rikas, who is scoring uh, for France? Is it my man Mbappé? You know, tonight, guys, I identify as a member of Allez Le Bleu. Not enough final players got selected, so I'm on, I'm on Allez Le Bleu. Mbappé and up in... Silas... Oh, really? Is it uh, is, uh, Silas making mistakes? Oh, no. Like, I think our team is just too weak tonight. We, we are missing our top tier players. I think the Netherlands is just too weak tonight. So I've got zero hopes. But obviously I don't want to see them lose like 7-0. That's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> then the Germans are allowed to make fun of me. Now obviously Moja's APM does go up a little bit once he starts multitasking. And like guys, I have played many games against Moja. And he does not feel slow. He really doesn't feel slow when I play against him. He just kind of uses his APM very wisely. We're going to stim forward here with the Marines. And he's going to be able to get a pretty good fight here almost immediately. As Nemshar was a tiny bit out of position. It's of course a bit of a sloppy start by Nemshar. Not too bad in the end. But yeah, do you really want to be the Roach player while only having a 6 worker advantage over a Terran. And has played very greedy. And we don't have a quick hive or an infestation pit out. I'm not really feeling this game for Nemshar. But... Maybe he can prove me wrong. 
with a great first fight. Who knows? But so far, I'm not quite feeling it. Monte morphing his Hellions into Hellbats. Maybe uh, aware of the amount of Roaches and Ravager that are out on the battlefield. I'm not. This is a lot of depots. <laughs> 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 you don't want to lose every single depot here, guys, because then you're going to be supply blocked until the middle of game two. But this Terran army does have a lot of firepower. Moja does need to get on top of spending his money. Seems like he's buying time for those upgrades, right? These 2-2 two -two upgrades are so damn quick. It is 8 minute 2-2 two -two bio, guys. Is he trying to break a new world record over here? As Nemtar is maxed out, but a lot of that supply is in production. And Marines and Marauders with an upgrade lead over Roaches and Ravages. Most of the time goes very well for the Terran. Moja's medevac count is freaking high. And Moja's upgrades are incredibly damn good. Yeah, that is actually going to be okay. Did lose 15 SCVs, did lose a bunch of depots. But I, I'd still say this is a successful hold. Should not lose too many units in the chase. Oh God. These, these are the quickest Terran upgrades ever, man. Guys, 3-3 is up and running. 8 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Nemshar is going to click on bio at minute 10 and he's going to see 3-3. And he's going to be like, WTF, mate. Huh. You can see that Moja is getting a little bit quicker right now. 180 average is obviously it's kind of fun. It's still a lot slower. I mean, the bio unit is going to sim forward again. As Nemsha still thinks he can be aggressive, but he honestly cannot, man. This Terran army is too big, too powerful. It's uh, one hell of a greedy build by Moja. I honestly think if this is a build that he specifically chose against Nemchar because he still knows about Nemchar's reputation, of being a very safe and cautious Zerg. I think it's very smart. That honestly deserves a little big brain emoji in the chat. Concussive and 3-3. <laughs> How often do you guys see this, by the way? Concussive shells and 3-3 on the production tab. I don't see that very often. Is there a, a chance? I feel like it's kind of close, right? Imagine a Marine Marauder with plus three against Roaches and Ravages with plus one. That's, uh... It's very funny that you can look at a game where half of the minimap is purple. The Zerg is maxed out, yet you feel like the Zerg is dead. Because I really feel that the Zerg is dead. <laughs> We're gonna need speed banes, but... This by army, man. Moja needs to obviously start attacking now. He could even eat a couple of big corrosive balls to the face here. He's playing a little mini game. This looks like Super Mario Sunshine over here. Chasing an army while avoiding the corrosive balls. <laughs> it does seem that plus two carapace will finish up right in time. So it's still just down an upgrade. But down an upgrade is a big deal. Oh my goodness. Mina, Fressa, Moja. What an army. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about Widow Mines? Who cares about tanks? The guy with the... This is so much bio. What the hell am I looking at? 62 Marines. 30 Marauders. They stim forward one more time. Plus 3 is done. Pre-11 minute mark. We do have a couple of Speed Banes coming in. And Speed Banes can definitely mess things up a little bit. But nice splits by Moja here on three. Still a lot of Banes in the mix though. So good macro as well by Nemshar. And the upgrades are a big problem. These Banelings do not have any great upgrades. Very sexy micro by Moja. Supply is dwindling though at a pretty rapid pace. And Lemshar actually is still hanging in there with a lot of links and a lot of ravages. Those Banelings were absolutely necessary. Wow, this got really close. 60 army supply against 60 army supply at the moment. Moja is not transitioning, not expanding, not building any SCVs. And he lost a lot of bio. Nemchar could maybe stabilize if he spends that money right now. These 1k minerals that he's sitting on. He could even lose the base and be fine. Might even be able to lose two bases and be fine. Oh, we still need to survive a little bit longer. Moja runs forward, but there are Barones, excuse me, there are Bailings in the mix. And Ravages is really damn good. Nice target fire there with the Marauders on the Roaches. What a game. This is actually so close, guys. Every second that goes by, I like it more and more for Nemsha. But I still think there is some potential for Moja. With the plus three bio that he's working with. Medivac count at seven. Honestly, pretty decent. Sentient said 100% dead. Moja dead? 
I don't know. As long as Bio has an upgrade advantage, I do not think he's that. I wouldn't hate a scan or two, by the way. Baning count, guys. 14. Decent count. Nice splits as well. But so many ravages still on the top right side. More Banelings coming in from the bottom. And these are the Baneling connections that Nemcha was looking for. I really thought Nemcha was in all sorts of trouble against that ridiculously large Bio Force. But that Baneling Nest and Baneling Speed finished up in time. And yeah, now he's cooking. He is absolutely cooking as a 6 base Zerk. Can even maybe drop his infestation pill exactly and make his way up to a hive. Now Mocha is suddenly forced to drop a fourth base. I don't think he was even planning on that. He's like, yeah, I guess I do need to need, uh, make a different unit than Marines and Marauders. <laughs> Those Banings guys were the saving grace. Without Banings, there's absolutely no way the damn show was ever going to stop the bio army. But the Baning has finished up after the initial two attacks. I almost feel that Moja gave Nemshar a little bit too much time to even allow this transition to take place in the first place because there's no need to be worried about roaches and ravages if you have like a 30 army supply lead and an upgrade lead. Widowmine's another Lego. I mean, I, 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 I like the way that Moja played. I just think at one point, after he, the army ran into the meat grinder over here, I think he gave a bit too much respect to what Nemshar was working with. Now it's going to be a completely different game. Nemshar, 26 Banelings, Hive Tech on the way, and 22 additional Banelings finishing up. So we went from no Banelings out on the map to 40 plus Banelings out on the map. That is obviously a problem. Maybe Moja can slowly but steady secure a fourth base, but we will see. Suddenly it's a big blob of Zerg. We had a big blob of Bio earlier. And now it's just a big blob of Zerg here with a couple of Banings in the mix looking for those Rim connections. I gotta say, I've been feeling Moja's uh, micro against the Banings with his bio. We do have a few Banings rolling in. And Nemcha does a very good job of not throwing away those Banings after he kills all the SUVs. And he kills the Command Center as well with the Ravages. Sexy multitasking here by Nemcha, guys. That old dog is showing us that he still has it too. I mean, if you get Saral's blessing to play in a big brain boss, you gotta deliver. And the man is absolutely delivering. Have we had like a bad game yet today, guys? <laughs> I guess there was one PVZ that ended with the first roach attack. Other than that, I feel like every game had a bit of uh, drama, had a bit of disaster, and had a couple of very close battles, as damn sure is still fully sending it. More banelings coming in from the top right side. SCVs are going to run into a mid grinder too. And that will be it. GG. Nemshar. The first roach attack didn't get it done. The second roach attack didn't get it done. But then he did manage to buy enough time for himself to get the Baneling nest up. Fired up Baneling speed immediately. And the Baneling's on creep absolutely is what saved him against the 130 supply of 3-3 bio of Moja. That was a very different game. A very unique game. And a fun one. Picking well-balanced matchups with interesting players. Yeah, man. I, I feel like I'm on fire tonight, guys. You know, you don't want to give too many compliments to yourself, but I burn myself to the ground every single time I play ladder. But I think when it came to matchmaking tonight, I have absolutely crushed it. Creed says it is fine. Moja will come back on 7-1-1 and 8 Rex. 7-1-1. 7 barracks? What? What is the 7-1-1 and 8 Rex? 3-0 Mbappé? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, today I feel French. Uh, je m'appelle Kevin. Uh, ça va et toi, mon ami? Uh, let's go ahead. <laughs> Suest une belle nuit de StarCraft? C'est une belle nuit de StarCraft. Close enough, guys. I am French. <laughs> I think I nailed that. <laughs> I just feel French. Today I feel French. Let's go ahead and hop into game two between these video gamers. 
Round two. Fight. <laughs> Omle du fromage. I mean, we all know that. Dex's laboratory, the classic. I feel like that has to be one of the most famous cartoon episodes of all time, no? Omle du fromage. Omle. Bottom right side, uh, representing K10, the man who played a very greedy build in game one and had a great hold, had a great second hold. I honestly thought he had the game in the back, but I was uh, wrong in this TVZ. This is our German Terran uh, Moja. Go that Cartoon Network originals. Yeah, man, the old days with the Powerpuff Girls. I am not too ashamed to admit that I absolutely love the Powerpuff Girls. I love Johnny Bravo. I loved Cow and Chicken. Love Dex's Laboratory. I think those were my favorites. I am Weezu and I am Baboon. Yeah, those, those were pretty good. That's in the top five. Okay, that's the top five. Go to top five. Top left side of Dragon Skills, we are looking at the main base of our Swedish legend. He got the blessing of the great Iona Sotala. And if Saro tells me to do something, I do it, guys. Because I may be the captain of Basilisk, but I still follow orders of the king. This is Namshar. I have the feeling that Johnny Bravo would probably not be very approved of in this day and age, right? Well, I thought it was awesome. I am Weezo and Cow and Chicken were so surreal, I always found them disturbing. No. You know, Cow and Chicken was awesome. And when I was a teenager, guys, I was very into scooters. So, not motorcycles, but scooters. And there was this one dude, and some of you guys, especially Dutch people, will remember this one. Gisilera Rene was always one of the coolest scooters out there. And I went to a scooter race once, and there was a dude who had a Gilera running, fully covered in cow and chicken graphics. And that was like the coolest scooter I've ever seen. I, uh, I think I still have a picture out there somewhere on my hard drive. Maybe I can bring it up later tonight, but... I was so jealous of that guy, he had the coolest scooter. I didn't know who it was, but it was amazing. Ed and Anneli is actually one that I watched too, yes. We've got triple CC once more, but obviously it's a bit of a different opening, right? It's Reaper Fast Expand. Last game we went CC into Barracks, into Gas, into... No, into CC, into Gases, into Double eBay. That was a build that Flash would have approved of, and he played StarCraft too. I think we've mentioned all the good shows, guys. And obviously, if we talk about my days as a teenager and watching television, because we didn't have any internet back then, of course, Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon were absolute god tier. Oh, yeah, I was living for those shows. I never really liked any of the other Dragon Balls, like Dragon Ball GT I thought was weird, and they had many others. I all thought they were weird, but the original Dragon Ball Z definitely goaded. Yeah, I know those in Enantuna, but... I always thought it was a bit weird. Same with like Power Rangers, wasn't really my thing. Yu-Gi-Oh! I never watched. I, I, honestly guys, the Cartoon Network shows that I just mentioned, Powerpuff Girls, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, yeah, Ed, Ed and Nettie deserves to be mentioned as well, and I Am Weasel, and then Dexter's Laboratory. Those are the ones I watched, and then obviously I was a massive Dragon Ball Z fan, and a massive Pokemon fan. South Park came a bit later for me. You know, when I was 8 or 9, I don't think I was watching South Park. But I do think South Park is awesome. I'm glad that some of you guys are from the same uh, age category as I, as I am. And grew up in similar times. I guess we can truly identify as a 90s kid, guys. Yeah, I, I think most people that are born between like 84 and 1990 will probably have pretty similar preference to TV shows. <laughs> All right, enough about all these shows. This game is about to heat up. Armory, guys. Pretty quick armory in the mix here for Moja. So it gives me the idea that he wants to be very careful with these Hellions. And he's going to potentially uh, make some big bio attack. Morph the Hellions into Hellbats. Did a good job there, by the way. Picking up the drone, denying the fourth place. It's all these little victories that will end up into one big victory. 
Moji, I was very excited once I let him know that. Uh, well, he was already excited when I asked him to play in the big rain bouts. He's like, yeah, of course. Last time was awesome. So I'll gladly do that again. And then when I told him that he would go up against Nemcha, he's like, oh, that's cool. I love it. He's like, I didn't think about that. And I was like, well, that's what I'm for, mate. So he was feeling this best of five. He was looking forward to it. Obviously, I think he's aware of the fact that it is a tough challenge. Uh, Nemshar is a much more accomplished player, is a more experienced player. But I feel Moja is pretty damn good at the moment. And we'll see if he has what it takes to really make Nemshar sweat. I thought game one was really all the German Terran, but he was not quite able to get the job done. Just getting a cancer here on the hedge would be big. Now we're going to have to split our Hellbats though. I feel like our splits were pretty good in the previous game. We need to make sure that the Veilings do not connect with our Marine. Sexy splits again, though. But it's more in Veiling showing up. A nice target fire there. Liquid Clum. Liquid Clum. Guys, Moja's micro. Hey, I'm pretty impressed, man. I think Moja is honestly controlling his buy in a pretty excellent manner. As he steams forward, gets another queen. Got those final few circlings as well. Uno Mas. And now finally it's time to pick up for a split second. That was six Hellbats and eight Marines for 15 Banelings, four Queens and 16 Links. Moja's micro is honestly incredibly sexy. For a man that we sometimes tease about having somewhat low APM, Moja's micro is on point, man. Hmm? Did not get the hatchery. That's the only thing that could have made all of that a little more perfect. But make no mistake, this is a phenomenal start from Moja thousand resources against 2500 resources and especially that amount of banelings this has got to feel really good finds a few more banelings in the center of the map i feel like it's game one all over again where things are not looking too hot for nemshar seven eight minutes in but he won that one can he prove me wrong again and summon that one guy in the chat that only ever makes an appearance when i make a wrong prediction there's one dude that lives for it, guys. He lurks in the shadow. I generally believe that he's sitting at 3 million channel points because he always has my stream open. And he just waits for me to be wrong. And then he's like, Jeez Louise, stop predicting things. And I'm like, God damn it. It's unbelievable, man. Some people really need a life. We throw down a scan as we get a couple of crew tumors. Nemchar I'm sure is working with a few more uh, lings and banes at this point. His upgrades are quite sexy as well. He's actually ahead in the upgrades. And that's obviously always a good place to be as a Zerg. Moja producing two tanks at a time. Playing a very different style than he did in the previous game. Supply still looking good. We need to start sieging up though, mate. Two out of our three tanks not sieged up. Kind of a scary moment there. Oh no, it's totally fine to always watch my stream. If anything, that makes me happy. But to always watch my stream, never say anything, never be nice, and just wait for that one moment where I'm wrong, and quite often I feel like I'm not even wrong. It's just the analysis in the moment was right. It's like right now, right? France is up 3-0 against the Netherlands. If anybody would say that the France is owning the Netherlands, you wouldn't be wrong. But if the Netherlands somehow comes back and makes it 3-3, yeah, you can be like, hey, you were wrong, you said you were owning them. It's like, well, they were at that point. You know, things change. It's just that dude is a dick. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will, Jurgen. Guys, anybody wondering about the statues or wants to see, see the statues up close, as soon as all the games are done tonight, we have this best of five, and then we have one more best of five, then I will show you guys the statues again. I honestly feel like this is my workout. I'm going to give up my gym membership and just uh, lift these 25 kilogram statues in front of the camera and rotate them. I think it qualifies as a proper workout. Nemcho's creep spread is excellent, by the way, despite the fact that uh, Moja is doing a very good job and being all over it. Pushing it back. Moja, do we pick up? Yes, we do. Can we siege up? I think it's in time. Well, a couple of things we're not siege up. Nemcho is here with a whole of Link Bane. And this time around, the veining connections are bigger. Hydra is a little bit clumped up. Liberators, will they ever siege up? Yes, they do. Very good fight by Nemshar, but I still think that Moja should be able to stabilize. Is this a beautiful moment? Well, maybe not actually, because it's 2-2 against 1-1. Only now, guys. The upgrades kick in for Moja. Nemshar with a, honestly a beautiful timing. The Planetary Fortress is here. And there aren't too many banelings left. These Hydras are still slow Hydras too. 
So Nemtar is forced to go home for a split second, but that was a big win for our uh, Swedish Zerg. I have not asked TLO yet. I will definitely be down to ask TLO, but TLO is a uh, very busy man. Uh, but yeah, it would be awesome to have Dr. Dario once. Uh, oh, I like that one. TLO versus King Cobra, yes! <laughs> I do really like that one. That's a great idea. All right, Nemcha is going to try to do something about this planetary, and I think he will, guys, with this many Bane links. Planetary lives for a split second, does a very good job in avoiding the Liberators, too. Libs are just looking at the wrong angle. Uh, that's a big win for Nemshar. Back-to-back big wins for Nemshar. If only Moja, guys, his tanks were a little bit more sieged up. Uh, I think that would have been a very different fight, but... Moja was not quite ready. Nemshar hit a picture-perfect timing. He had 2-2, Moja had 1-1, tanks on siege, and like 10-15 seconds before Liberator showed up. You, you could not imagine of a better moment for Nemsha to show up there. Nemsha is still legit. Look at the minimap, man. Holy smokes. Is this Saro giving him some tips on how to cover the minimap purple? I know Nemsha's creep spread was good, but I didn't really think this was something Nemsha particularly excelled at. This is incredibly solid creep spread. And don't forget, guys, it got nerfed. Creep spread got nerfed. <laughs> Moja sees the queen there, but there is also an army. This time around, guys, the tanks are siege up. Literally, is our siege up. Can the marines hold the line? Can we save the tanks? No, the banings will blow up the tanks. That's still a lot of guy with guns surviving. Obviously, Nemcha does a good job in picking at least a couple of the tanks off, but a much better fight for Moja this time around. Even upgrades, tanks sieged up makes a big difference. It is Hive Tech though. It is Hive Tech with Vipers on the way, Adreno Glens on the way. Do we have an Ultralisk Cavern yet? We do not. I'm not sure, I'm sure. But upgrades are still even. Tanks are ready, but Mings and Bane's doing a pretty good job. I think he just kind of wants to get the Command Center, but he's not going to get it this time around. A lot of Marines survive. These two are having, honestly, a very fun scrap so far. Just two games into this best of five. These games tonight are, are fantastic. The only thing we can make it better is to make sure that Moja wins the map. Now, to be fair, I've been very worried about Moja basically being 2-0 up. And now I suddenly am worried about him being 2-0 down, so I guess we don't have to be too concerned. Throws down a scan, tries to just stabilize on four bases, but obviously Nemshar is a 7-8 base Zerk. I'm losing track as he even takes the bottom left side at this point. Look at this man, like, scan goes down, two more get cleaned up, immediately sends the queen over and renews those creep tumors. Moja is playing that uh, mission of the campaign, where you just have to survive wave after wave. There is creep everywhere, the man has absolutely zero map presence. And I wouldn't hate that if you had a ghost academy and like four, five, six ghosts out on the map, be like, oh yeah, let's turtle, let's buy some time and get ghosts. But... We're not playing with ghosts, and that is a problem. Does have 122 army supply, though. Yeah, it's kind of nice. 20 minutes past 9. Blinding Cloud is going to cover multiple tanks. Vipers show up as well. Beautiful Viper play here, guys, by Nemshaw. But that's still a buttload of Marines. I like the Blinding Cloud. I like the Abduct on the Liberator. Just to, uh, even if you can't kill the Liberator immediately, I want to say it's okay. Because at least they are no longer in their siege mode. Where they one-shot everything. Thank you so much, funny dude. Units lost resource tab. We can see that Nemsha has lost 45k more. I'd say these are very acceptable numbers for a Zerg to work with. And it's now just kind of playing ring around the rosy. Find the opening in the Terran defenses. Takes out a tank, takes out a bunker. Will get a lot of SCVs here. But it's also going to lose a lot of battle units. Bailings on the left side couldn't get anything done because the PF and the Liberators. I don't know, guys. Do we believe? Does Mo does uh, does Nemchar need an investor or two? Reed believes in Moja. Loho believes. 
Now we're about to find out this very important moment. We have a blinding cloud going down. Bailing's getting obliterated. The marine micro again. Mocha's marine micro, guys. It's honestly very sexy. But there is still just so much Zerg storming through down that ramp. And uh, fights on creep or off creep just makes a night and day difference. The Hydras, they just feel a whole lot more powerful the moment they're on creep. It's so much easier for them to get in range. As Nemcha now wants to get this orbital. Banelings will blow up the SCVs and Moja is in trouble. Again, just a very sexy spread immediately. But it's a numbers game and the numbers are in favor of Nemcha. As he gets on top of the final tanks. And Nemcha looked like he was in trouble in both games will still end up taking the 2-0 lead. And I am generally, guys, very, very impressed by the way that Nemshar is able to just turn these games around. It feels like it's a disaster. It feels like he's in trouble. And he just kind of flips the script. Like, all right, bad start. Creep, creep, creep. Inject, inject, saturate bases. And now it's my time. I do think that Moja was legitimately a tiny bit unlucky in... Uh, in the first big attack of Nemshar up the ramp with the planetary fortress, that was just, like there are timings that you look for as a Zerg player, but that was honestly, I think, a little bit of luck as well. Where it's like, all right, the 10 15 second window before the tanks siege up, before the liberators siege up, before the Terran upgrades kick in, these are not things that Nemshar could have necessarily all been aware of. Worked out in a picture perfect moment for him, and unfortunately for Moja, those were the 10 worst seconds of seeing a Zerg army show up. I think in game one, he was definitely a bit too passive. I thought in game two, he was pretty aggressive in the beginning. He was in the face of Nemshar. He got the final queen. The only thing that we could say was lacking perhaps a little bit after that great start is pick up eight Marines, right? And shift rally them to the bottom left side. Drop, them, uh, drop those eight Marines in the main base. Get eight Marines on the top right side of the map. So you can at least push back the creep there. And maybe run into a mineral line. Get a couple drones. Pick up. Get out of there again. That's the one thing that perhaps was missing after that great start, but we'll see what game three has in store for us. Round three, fight. In the top left side of Babylon, we are looking at the main base of a German Terran. Was so close to winning game one. Had a phenomenal start in game two. Yet we find ourselves here down 0-2. Can we start turning in the round for K-10 and the boys? This is Moja. In the bottom right side of Babylon, we are looking at the main base of the Swedish Zerg, who's showing us that he may be a veteran. He may be an old dog, but he absolutely still has it. Representing Psystorm Gaming, won his first appearance on the Friday night, and now takes the 2-0 lead. And the second time he plays, this is Nemshar. Babylon is a uh, very good map for Terran. I would say out of the seven maps in our current map pool, I think I like Babylon the most. I feel like this is a map that has Moja written all over it. Bit surprised that we go like Dragon Skills into Babylon. We have Gresvan. That's a very weird map order, to be honest. Gresvan. Dragon Skills, Babylon. Did Moja pick all three maps or? <laughs> We will see. No crazy CC first. No crazy CC into double gas into another CC. We're just going to kick things off with the Reaper here in the co-main event of the evening. Next Friday, guys, we may do things a tiny bit different. Because next Friday is kind of a special day, but I don't have any announcements about that yet. I obviously plan on being here again next Friday to show you guys some StarCraft. But I don't know if it's going to be the traditional Big Brain Bouts format. Or if we're going to spice it up a little bit. Or we'll brainstorm a little and come up with a fun Friday for the 31st. But to be that honest, I'm not even thinking about that Friday. Because I'm mostly thinking right now at the moment about Monday. WTL. Basilisk versus Platinum Heroes. And then I believe it's one series a day. So Monday we'll play. Tuesday we'll play. It's going to be awesome can't wait. I'm pumped. I'm stoked. 
the open qualifiers were fun, but I think code A is uh, going to be a whole lot more fun. I think we're going to have a blast. And hopefully at the end of the road, we can call Basilisk officially a WTL team. Should be pretty doable. And we can get ready for the big leagues. Hmm? Prediction on the five teams who qualified to code S? I have no idea, man. I would obviously predict Basilisk and then maybe Abydos. I think Platinum Heroes have a good chance because they have a sexy roster. I have no idea about 4 and 5. I didn't even really study that bracket to be honest. I just looked at Basilisk and I looked at our bracket. For the first time guys, I want to say in like... Uh, 6 TVZs? We are looking at Cloak Benches? Something that we kind of like to call the default opening in TVZ. Something that we sometimes see 3, 4, 5 games in a row back to back. I think legitimately the first time in 6 TVZs that we get to see the Hellion Cloak Banshee opening. Mystery Gaming with Classic and DRG. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable team. That creep is spreading fast. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I was very impressed. Because we cannot forget, guys, that in the previous game, Moja managed to kill four queens with his first Hellbat Marine attack. And normally, if a Zerg player loses four queens that early on, you're going to see that throughout the majority of the early game and the mid game, where there is a lack of creep because they just didn't have that much energy to drop creep tumors anymore. But apparently, uh, nothing slows down Nemshar. Creed is still a believer in Moja. We're gonna drop two extra barracks on reactors. First Banshee is out. Cloak is done. Second Banshee is out. And I'd say it's uh, time to see if we can find some damage. How much did Nemsha scout, guys? Well, Nemsha saw spinning tech lab, so. Creed says, I'm telling you, 3 to 2 for Moja. That would mean it's going to be a long night for uh, Kalazur and Trigger, but. How is my country doing, by the way, guys? How is France performing tonight? Is France still up 3-0? <laughs> still salty? You never got... Well, there's only one person to be salty at, and that's me. Blizzard legitimately asked me, like, at 10 different occasions to do a voice back. I just never did it. Well, it was my choice. Why not? I mean, I've already gone over this like 20,000 times. The TLDR is just that there were so many on, out already that I felt there was not too much room for creativity. And I didn't want to release a product that then you guys would buy and would potentially be bad. And I guess the fear was just that my voice pack would suck and people would hate me. So I didn't want to do it. I know you guys see me as a cocky man, but I too can be an insecure, delicate butterfly, guys. <laughs> This is uh, the most passive Hellion Banshee, by the way. A Ling, an Overlord, and two Creep Tumors. He just wants Super Dad. Hey, I made it up to you guys. Instead of having a voice pack, you guys can listen to me 10 hours a day for 12 years straight on Twitch. So, I think that's better than a voice pack. Banshee's getting a couple shots up, getting a nice little cancel there, at least on one of the hatcheries. But Nemshire is already a 4 base Zerg, so I don't make that bigger than what it is. In Dutch we say, you wilt van a mug geen olifant maken. No, good luck translating that if you don't speak Dutch. Don't make mountains out of moleholes. That's actually the way they say it in English. I don't know how that suddenly came up. Well, it's obviously not a direct translation, but the Dutch version of it is... Don't turn a mosquito into an elephant. And then I gave you guys the English one. <laughs> I think ours is better. <laughs> I think we do it better in Dutch. <laughs> Hydro then on the way for Nemchor as Moja throws down a scan. Finds an overlord, finds a couple creep towards. 
tries to just keep that creep under control. Uh, the two Banshees are still alive. This Banshee has zero kills and this Banshee has one kill. Now the other day, I casted a TVZ where two Banshees in the beginning of the game were made and they got zero kills but stayed alive until minute 15. That is a world record. Those were legitimately the first two Banshees I've ever seen alive for 15 minutes and get zero kills. It was done by tagged SC2 guys. <laughs> Namcha coming in from the bottom side of the map with a lot of links, a lot of Bane links. The bio micro has been very good so far on the side of Moja. I want to say this is not a bad start for Namcha, but obviously lost a lot of units there. This time around, guys, the shoe is on the other side, or if Moja is going to be the one with a little... Well, that made no sense what I said, but ignore me. I've been talking for a little bit too long right now. Too many TVZs, my head is spinning. But it's all good. We've got 2-2 two, two upgrades for Moja. While Nemsha is still going to be stuck on 1-1 one, one, or maybe 1-2 for a little bit longer. Benchies have now been brought to the front as well. I mean, I feel hopeful for Moja again. But to be fair, I felt hopeful the first two times. And those two games went in favor of Nemsha. Can Moja prevent the clean sweep? Nemsha sets up a little surround coming in from the top side. Coming in from the bottom left. There's links and banes all over the place. I want to say a decent amount of marines survive, but is it enough marines? The banshees are still in the mix. They will cloak. They're still going strong. Moja down 22 workers though. He knows that he needs more. He cannot give Nemshar a second to recover. I think it's too much Zerg right now, guys. I just see, well, I see Bainlings finishing up. They're not quite there yet. The reinforcements coming in from both sides. It is such a close fight. The marine micro is so damn sexy again. But in the end, Banelings will connect. More ba Marines show up in the center though. What a fight. What a fight and what a scrap. But this time, I do not think that Moja is going to let go of the gas. It's pedal to the metal. One speed, one gear. Go. The German Terrans got Tiger Blood, baby. He stims. He gets some drones. And he's not done yet. Keeps on stimming. Gets a few more links. Gets a high rise in the natural. Six Banelings are morphing. Can he prevent these Banelings from finishing up? This is it, guys. Will K10, Moja, finally get a map after a good start. Yes, it is it. This time around, no magical comeback for Nemjor. And Moja gets a point on the board. A GG gets called. Well done. Good micro, man. The marine micro of Moja is honestly spectacular in some of these moments. Where it feels that he didn't even see where the banelings are coming from. He doesn't even know which direction to run. Often it's on the edge of creep or on creep. And he still does a very good job in keeping the Marines alive. Yeah, I mixed up like three sayings then on Imba. I wanted to go with uh, the one where it's not fun when the rabbits got the gun. And then I was thinking of shoes and I was like, okay, now my head is spinning. I can't even blame it on whiskey, guys, because we are all out of whiskey. It seems that my nation is still up 3-0 over the Netherlands, so that's nice. How's Poland doing, guys? Poland doing a... Have they recovered? Ah, that's say 2-0. Sweden is losing. It's, you know. Shout out to Alele Bleu, guys. They're making me proud tonight. Where did all the whiskey go? I only had one bottle the last time I went to the supermarket and I drank it. It's empty. It's been empty for a couple days. Round 4. Fight! Game 4, co-main event of the evening. After this, we have one more best of five, guys. In the top right side of Royal Blood, we are looking at the main base of our German Terran. Down 1-2. But honestly, every single game has been close. Has been competitive. So he could very well send it to game 5. This is K-10's Moja. Making all of us low APM nerds out there proud. He's doing it, guys. He's doing it on purpose. He's like, warm up. I do not believe in a thing called the warm up. Zero APM, baby. In the bottom left side, we're looking at the main base of the Swedish veteran. He got the Jonas Sotala blessing to make an appearance tonight. And he's honestly putting on one hell of a show. Undefeated on Friday nights. But he only played once earlier. This is Namshar. Uh, I am interested, yes, Langens Heider, but I don't think a lot about it. I don't have too strong of an opinion. I thought the timing was a bit weird, because you would think that 
anybody eliminating Paris Saint-Germain from the Champions League. You're like, oh, woohoo, we're doing great. Now, I know they lost to Leverkusen after that, but feels a little bit dramatic to me. But I guess the players and the coach just didn't get along, right? It's the same that's going to happen to Roddy, guys. If eventually Roddy will not get along with the other star players on Basilisk. Roddy being a star player. But, you know, Rainer, Serral, Trigger. And if all three of them want me out, Roddy's going to go. <laughs> so maybe that's what happened with Bayern Munich. I don't know. But for now, it's a very happy marriage. We all get along great. And that's just because we're winning. <laughs> mm. I am a Dortmund fan, so I don't care too much what Bayern Munich does. But hey, the more unrest, the better, right? It'd be such a dream year if Feyenoord and Dortmund win their respective national leagues. Obviously, like as much as I love Dortmund, I am a lot more invested in Feyenoord's journey, but it'd be super cool to see Dortmund win. <laughs> Reaper runs into the natural. Moja will not try to get a drone. Instead, he's just battling the Zorklings. I feel like... There was a, a little window there to try to get lucky and potentially get a drone, but... Gets the creep tumor though, that's pretty big. Hey, we talked about we talked about slowing down the creep. That's one way to slow down the creep. Amaretto and Sour. I don't think I've ever tried that, Apodi. I've tried a decent amount of drinks, but I've never tried that one. But I believe that is good. Thank you, Fukolts, for gifting a subby to Wookie Man. Oh, yeah. Wookie Man was giving me some love. Impossible to not get along with Roddy, the loving dad of StarCraft. That's sweet of you, mate. I try. I've always tried. It's a lot easier when you're casting than when you're playing. It is actually somewhat... Sometimes, guys, it's a little bit unfair where you read comments on the internet and then... People hold certain mood swings during 12-hour letter streams. Very personal. Where they're like, oh, I don't like Roddy. He was salty this one day. I watched his stream. It's like, yeah, come on. We're playing StarCraft. It's a game that causes a whole lot of pain. I lose 50% of my games. I've been playing for 11 years. Of course I'm going to be salty sometimes. I stream 10 hours a day for like 10 years straight. Yeah, I'm a human. Sorry, I'm not a freaking robot who's super happy and loving 24-7. Even Gabe gets salty, guys. Even Gabriel, the Terran leather animal. Even Gabe gets salty. Hmm. Pretty uh, quick lair, I feel like, this game by Nemsha. A little bit quicker than the previous games, if you ask me. Got a scout off with the Overlord. Spots uh, once more that it could very well be Cloak Banshee. Mojia doesn't want to reveal the Banshee, even though the scout got off on the tech lab, but could still pretend that maybe it's a Raven and, you know, the cloak was a fake. Mm. Now, in the open qualifiers, Basilisk was the best performing team. Mm. Bailing Ness goes down, Double Evo goes down, and 10 drones have been fired up as Mojia is just kind of waiting for his sweet moment interesting usage of the banshees right last game it felt that the banshees had more impact in that final fight at that six o'clock base than they ever had in the mid part of the game where normally they shine where they find drones that are being transferred between bases or they maybe get like a stray queen but felt that moja's one key was to keep those banshees alive and just really utilize that additional dps and to be fair, looking at how close that fight was at a certain moment, it probably made the difference. <laughs> Two goats and a Roddy. Here come the Banshees, guys. They activate Cloak and they do find a Stray Queen. This is what I mentioned before. This is also a nice map, I think, to have Banshees like on the edge of the main base and the third. Super annoying as Nemsha to deal with. And if you use all your queens to defend against the Banshees, uh, the doors could be opened for the Hellions to potentially try to get lucky. This could still turn into a five-game series. Obviously, Royal Blood is not quite as good as Babylon. It's not a bad map for Terran, I think. Well, compared to some of the other maps, I think it's a harder map. It's a playable map, but it's definitely a bit more difficult. Hmm. Do 
Drones being transferred to this base now on the bottom right side. We used to have a cool gaming cafe since you're talking about a game cafe. A long time ago there was a game cafe in Rotterdam called the Game Syndicate. And that's actually where I played my very first Warcraft 3 tournament ever. I was a total plap. I didn't bring my own equipment. I had no idea about audio settings. The uh, Warcraft 3 sounds were like at 500%. I blew my own eardrums out. Still took top 5 in the tournament. The year 2003 guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, gaming cafe is not really a thing here anymore. <laughs> Nemsha sure setting up a little bit of a surround or a counterattack. We'll keep a close eye on it. For now, he's actually sending all the links to the other side of the map. Moja has a couple units here, guys, but I want to say that's not necessarily enough. This is a good move, though. Running at least into your mineral line. Maybe the Metavex can make the difference. We'll keep a close eye on how many SCVs fall. First, we got to take a look at the Banshees, at the Hellbats, and at the Marines in the bottom side of the map. Baning count at 14. I don't see them. Uh, they're hiding below the hatchery. Here we go. Banings were hiding. Banings get at least very good connections with the Hellbats. Ooh, I love that tank, by the way. That's a sick tank on the high ground. I'm just sitting on a decent amount of money there. How much? How many queens do we have out? Seven. Seven queens. I'm going to say Mojo didn't lose as many SCVs as I thought he was potentially going to lose there. But obviously, 14 is a decent amount. This Banshee right now kind of being used as a scouting unit. You don't want to lose that tank, uh, by the way, Moja. Don't lose your tank, boost, pick up. Yes. Now we video game. Did anybody say we video gaming tonight, guys, on the Friday night? Huh? Roddy was... I uh, wasn't winning anything in 2003, Quantum. I, uh, I was kind of a pleb. I was brand new to the whole idea of esports in 2003. I never really won too many tournaments, to be honest. But in the Dutch scene, I did win. We basically had a, a DreamHack, but it wasn't international. It was just a Dutch equivalent of DreamHack called NetGames. And uh, Grubby was too cool to go to that. Because it was like you had to be there for two days to win 400 bucks or something, you know. And Grubby was too cool. So I did win that like six times in a row. That was pretty epic. And I, did, I never dropped a map either. I was always very keen on getting like the clean sweep. So I think I won net games like five or six times in a row without dropping a map. But that was a little bit later, like 2005, 2006. <laughs> no, that was 2005, Crete. Or in 2006, I actually went to Moscow to hang out with some of the Russian Warcraft 3 boys back then. And they were all very nice to me. Those are good times. They had the Aces tournaments. Aces. Aces Spring. Aces Winter. Like a hundred plus players would participate in this tiny tournament in a game cafe. It's good times. It's very different, obviously. Nothing was professional, but it was all about the passion and love for the game and competition. These two armies, guys, flirting with one another. Nemshar was thinking about going up that ramp, but obviously I had no idea what was waiting for him. This is a big old Terran army. 66 Marines and 6 tanks, guys. Is this the 666 build that Creed was alluding to? Got a macro hatch as well. Look at that mini map. Nemsha has a lot of forces on the top side of the map, but I don't want to miss the potentially game setting fight. Are the doors open? The doors are open. These eBays are going to get surrounded. I would go for the eBays there, to be completely honest. But Nemsha says, Nope, I don't care about eBays. I just want to kill as many SCVs as possible. And he is going to kill a whole bunch of SCVs, that's for sure. Ah, oh, Bailings. One tank dies. Oh, Bailings. Use the bait on the SCV stand, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the Bailings were clumped up. Seems like we had a bit of an engagement here as well, but not the biggest. As Moja sent a lot of units home. And Nemcha probably now feels that, especially with all these reinforcements on the way, killing 30 SCVs, this many units being busy at home. Kind of felt that this was a moment to send it. Nemcha's got to go for it right now before the reinforcements show up. And that is exactly what he does. He picks up the tanks that are exposed. Hydra's gone down the Liberators. Tanks on the high grounds go down. And all these Marines guys are drug addicts. They are overstimmed. And running out of ammo. Good job by Namshar. Honestly, a beautiful one too, right? The run by, the chaos, force that many units to go home. And that's when you clean up the army in the center of the map. This old fox is busting out all the tricks here. I'm honestly very impressed by the way that Namshar has played this best of five. He's, uh, he's showing us that we may not see him that much in tournaments. But you give that man the heads up for a couple of days. And he still knows how to show up. He still knows how to perform. And Mojia is good. Mojia really is one of the, the better Terrans in the European scene. He's not top five. But 
definitely in that group behind it, right between the sixth and the twelfth or thirteenth best Terran in Europe. But Nemshara is leaving. No stone unturned here. He knows. He knows Modja is good. So he knew he had to play a good series as well, and he did. Move commanding up the high ground here with all the lings and banes once more, allowing the Hydras to get underneath the Liberators. Lives die, tanks die, planetary dies, and all that's left is the guy with the gun. So I'm telling you guys, there is a chance. But it's not a very big chance. 61 Marines. They steam. They're gonna start the magical comeback. 3-3 three, three Marines though, guys. Who needs anything else, really? You can just max out on 3-3 three, three Marines. And you can split your Marines like a god. Do you really need to do anything else? I love how we still have a Banshee. As long as there are no Ultras though, guys, there actually is still a tiny chance. Like, it's obviously very tiny, but there are moments where Tank Marine can just get god tier fights against Hydra Link Bane. Where everything just walks into a meat grinder. 103 army supply against 104. Oh, nice little uh, Fort Knox here. Bunker, sensor tower. Nemshar wondering if you should fight the army in the center of the map or go for a run by. We are setting up a Ling run by. This is not the entire army of Moja, by the way. Moja, your tank! And does not save that tank. And now tanks are getting abducted in the front as well. Nemshar just feels that slow and steady wins the race here with his superior economy. What's the tank count? Yeah, three. The pr it's just... The guy with the gun is very good, but you don't want to be on creep against a lot of Banelings. Nemsha's Baneling count is high. We're looking at 37 Banelings. And obviously, utilizing those Vipers, reducing the tank count a bit is a sexy move. We've got energy for more Blinding Clouds or of Ducks. What is it going to be, Nemsha? Could be the final moments of this series. Still needs to respect. But those tanks soaked up a lot of Banelings. You guys see that? He abducted a tank in the middle of like 20 banes. And that was a full on bane explosion on a tank. In a weird way, that's not a bad trade for Moja. But the problem is that Moja has 44 SCVs and is on the clock, but he's just not able to make any progress here whatsoever. He is stuck. And Nemshar knows that he is stuck. We even got creep tumors right now making it almost into the natural of Moja. That's just disrespectful. Unnecessary roughness. 10 yard penalty for Nemshar. Automatic first down Moja. And with that first down, guys, we're gonna build a few more Marines. And tanks. What's the medevac count? 8. Two medevacs and a bunch of Marines on the bottom right side, but Nemshar has vision everywhere. And obviously, with vision, your life is just a whole lot easier as this arc. Is gonna go on the high ground one more time. Abducts a couple of tanks. Feels like a little bit of a clumsy fight, if you ask me. I know that Nemsha has a god tier economy, guys, and he can take a clumsy fight or two. As obviously it wasn't his entire army either. Like this game is 97% over, but you still need to be careful. Because there isn't that much gas in the bank. That's a lot of hydras going down. Nemsha now burns the entire piggy bank, fires up 70 extra links. Do we have Vipers left? Yeah, we have two Vipers. They have plenty of energy. It's six tanks and 70 plus Marines. You know? <laughs> a couple of Marines are active in the bottom right side. Nemshar is going to deflect those. He actually gunned down the Medivacs. That's a big win. Because Moja's economy is too bad to replace Medivacs. Now we are on creep. Nice blinding cloud on all those tanks. And the bailing should eventually be able to connect with Marines. And this right here, guys, is the fight that Nemshar was looking for. Got, got a little bit scary there for 0.1 second. But the Zerg economy is too big, too powerful, too much creep. And obviously very well uh, first up with you know, the Hydras, the Bane Links, the Vipers with some Blinding Clouds and Abducts. And just like that, it is Nemshar who takes the 3-1 to one victory over Moja. That means Nemshar now historically is 2-0 on the Friday night. He defeated Robby Plata and now he defeats Moja. So I guess we have to give him an even tougher opponent in the future. And we will. Uh, GG's to Moja too. I thought Moja honestly displayed some great micro at some moments. Game 1, I think he had it in the back. Game 2, I thought he pretty much had it in the back. So, 
I thought it was a very fun series, a very close series, very competitive, but in the end, I guess, a deserved victory for Namshar, as Namshar, his transitions were on point, and the creep spread, it was fantastic. Kudos to the old man for getting it done. It is the raining subbies indeed. Thank you to Basilis for giving us 10 more subs. Trying to see if there is anybody that really stands out in that list. I don't see any names that I'm too familiar with, but welcome everybody. And obviously make sure to say thank you to Basilis. Not for gifting a couple of subs in my channel, but make them uh, give them a thank you for allowing me to run this event. Where every single Friday we've got four best of fives. We give away $500 to the gamers. That is the biggest win of the Friday. The subs for me are a very nice bonus for me, but that's not that awesome for the scene. The show matches and the prize money that the players can win, that is awesome for the scene. We've got one. Wow, you guys settled for 50-50 again. Are you guys messing with me or what the hell? <laughs> but it is Nemshar in the end, the Swedish Zergi, who gets it done. Congrats to Nemshar.